Here's how to use OBS Studio step by step in our complete and updated OBS Studio tutorial for beginners. OBS, or Open Broadcaster Software, is a powerful free live streaming software that really packs a punch, so it can be difficult to jump into, but don't worry. This OBS tutorial will get you up to speed really fast. So here we are in OBS. I'm going to take you through this walkthrough using a Mac, but the process is exactly the same if you're on a PC as well. Now this is a brand new fresh install of OBS, so this is what you'll see if you've never opened the app before. The big black box here in the middle is your preview area. This is where you can see what it is you're going to be broadcasting out. Down the bottom here we've got our controls. This is where we can start streaming, start recording. We can switch between this preview mode and studio mode. So if I press on this now, you can see that we have our program monitor, which is what we're pushing out. This is exactly the same as what you were seeing before. But now we've actually got a preview as well. Now it is a little confusing because the other side's called preview mode and this is the preview here. We can queue things up on this side and then when we press this transition button here, then it will actually send it live. So if you have to be moving graphics and those sorts of things around and you want to not be doing it while you're live or the viewers aren't watching what you're doing while you're live, then you can use this mode, studio mode, to have that ability. For me personally, if I don't need that while I'm live, I'm gonna go back to the regular mode and you can just do that by clicking studio mode again and it will take you back to that with just the one big preview window. This is something you can switch between while you're live. The next one down here is the settings button. This will bring up all the settings for OBS. We'll jump back into this one very shortly. Down here in the bottom right hand corner, you can actually see your CPU usage. So you can see if your computer is under load and you're potentially dropping frames or having a bad live stream if your computer is under too much stress. So you can see all that at a glance, just right down the bottom just here. You can also see easily how long you've been live for or how long your recording has been going for as well. The next panel along to your left is the transition panel. This is where we can adjust the different types of transitions we have between the different scenes. We'll get to scenes in a minute, but know that you can adjust your transitions right here. Or if we're back in that studio mode like I showed you before, your transitions are also in the middle here as well. Let's get back to preview mode. The next one across here is your audio mixer. This is where you can easily see and adjust your volume levels for each of the different elements you're gonna have in your live stream or each of the different sources you're gonna have in your live stream. And next to that, we've actually got our sources. This is where we can add in all of our webcams, images, videos, websites, or anything we want to actually include and use in our live streams. And you can see if I just press on this plus button here, I've got all your options there. And the next one across here is your scenes panel. Now this is essentially where we can have groups of assets or different configurations for different elements or different sections of your live streams. So you might have a scene set up for just a full screen image of you on the screen. The next scene might be your computer screen that you're sharing. And you might have another scene for you with some text on screen. And as like almost every program out there, you've also got your standard menus and options right up the top here as well. So that's the overall interface. Okay, let's jump into getting OBS set up. So come down the bottom here to settings. Now, a lot of the settings in here are going to be personal preference and also going to come down to the type of live stream or the type of recording you're actually going to do. Things like how it looks, the theme, whether you want dark mode enabled, like so, or Yami default. I'm not sure why they called it that, but let's go with the Yami. So you can choose what theme you want. Likewise, with some of these output confirmations here, things like being able to show a confirmation dialog box when you're starting a stream or showing one when you're stopping a stream. This is what I'll normally have on. And this one's quite handy too. Like, are you sure you want to stop the stream? A little pop-up asks you if you want to confirm that, I'll normally have this one on. And exactly the same for stopping recording as well. Just in case it accidentally gets knocked and you don't want to stop streaming, you don't want to start recording. At least you've got a confirmation box here to maybe save you in that case. So for me personally, most of the time I have these three boxes ticked, automatically record when streaming. That just depends on how often you want your streams recorded. If you always do, then of course, it would be great to just tick that box as well. But I suggest that you have a scroll through this section. And just see if there's anything that stands out to you. Maybe at a later stage, once you've gone through and set everything up, that you can then add this further level of refinement to customize things up for yourself. So that's the general settings. The next one down is your stream settings over here. Now this is where we get to choose our streaming service up here, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, you've got all the different options there. These are the primary ones. If we actually hit show all, it brings up a massive list of all the supported live streaming platforms. But today we wanna to show you how it's done on YouTube. Select YouTube RTMPS. The next step I would recommend is to connect an account. So go ahead and click connect account. It will then bring up your accounts and choose the one that's right for you. And it's that simple. 
Now this is where we get to specify our output settings for our live streams, but also for our recording as well. So for configuring out our live stream, we need to specify a video bit rate. The default here is 4,000 kilobits per second, but with this number, the higher we go with it, the higher the quality of the stream we're going to push through to YouTube or whichever platform you'll be broadcasting to. But it also means that our internet speed, our upload speed needs to be capable of consistently pushing that amount of data to our broadcasting platform. Now, I'll link this page down in the resources below, but this is where YouTube suggests which bit rates you should be looking at for the different resolutions. This page is really handy. So this page tells us if we want to broadcast live to YouTube as 720p, the video bit rate should be between 1,500 and 4,000 kilobits per second. If we're doing a 1080p stream, that needs to be 3,000 to 6,000 kilobits per second. Now we can go above, but you really don't want to be going below these numbers for a decent looking reliable stream. So in this case here, we're going to be doing a 1080p live stream through to YouTube. I'm going to set this to 5,000 kilobits per second because I know my internet will be able to handle that kind of quality. So that's the video quality. We can also make changes to the audio quality here as well. Now I would recommend that you're not going any less than 128. The default here is 160. That's going to give you pretty good results. 192 right up to 320 will give you a higher quality audio. So if you want to be broadcasting live with music and those sort of things and you want to have the highest quality through, then you're going to want to pick a higher quality bit rate for your audio as well. Personally, I think anything from 160 to 256 is going to give you great results. But if you're only just speaking to your live stream, then you'll be able to get away with 160. So I'm going to leave it at that. So those are your live streaming settings. If you do want to also be recording, recording settings can be found just below and you can key all of your details in there. Now with the main ones being your recording format, you can see the default here is MKV, Matroska video that means apparently. You might wanna switch it to an MP4, very universally recognized format that one. And you'll also wanna adjust your recording quality because in a lot of cases, you wanna actually record a higher quality video than the one that you're streaming out. So higher than 5,000 kilobits per second. And I love the uh, default sort of wording they've got here. They've got high quality, medium file size, indistinguishable quality, large file size, lossless quality, tremendous large file size. So that's gonna be highest quality there, but I think it's pretty safe to go high quality, medium file size in most instances. The next area we wanna work on is audio. So we click down to audio there. We dive into some of the audio settings. There's really only a couple in here that you need to look at. The rest are gonna be fine by the default. The first one is your channels. By default, you wanna have this set to stereo, unless you specifically need to be broadcasting in mono or 2.1, 5.1 surround sound. For most people, you're gonna to wanna to leave this at stereo. The one that you really wanna check in here is your primary audio source, which is your mic, your auxiliary audio. So this one here, not audio two, three or four, don't worry about those, just the first one here. And you wanna change this from default to your actual microphone that you've got connected. So for me, it's this Rode NT-USB Mini. Make sure that is indeed the microphone that you've got connected to your computer. Now, even if the default setting here is using your correct microphone because of your system settings, I'd still strongly recommend that you're manually setting this to your actual microphone, just so that you don't have any issues down the track. All right, so we move on to video, video resolution settings on OBS. This is where we get to specify all of our video related settings for the quality, for the frame rate of the live stream that we're going to be creating, both here in OBS and also to whatever you're going to be pushing out, to YouTube in this case, or even to be recorded. The two of them actually don't need to be the same. So you could actually be working from a higher resolution project in OBS, but broadcasting out to YouTube or recording a video file in a lower scaled resolution. And that's what we get to specify in here. So the default here is that our basic canvas resolution or our OBS resolution is at 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. But the default is saying that we're going to be broadcasting our output at 720p, 1280 by 720. So I'm gonna hit this little drop down arrow and I'm gonna switch this to 1920 by 1080. Let's make it the same so that both our uh, OBS settings and our output through YouTube is going to be the same at a nice HD quality. You can see here, you've also got some high resolutions, 5120 by 2880 or 3360 by 2100. On the output, it doesn't go any higher than 1920 by 1080, but you can actually manually just change them in here if you would like. So you could go 2160 by 3840 to make it 4K. So you could change up the output resolution too, if you'd like. But I'm gonna leave that at 1920 by 1080. You can also change your frame rate here. It's got it at 60 by default. I'm gonna make that 30. 
Next one down is hotkeys. Hotkeys on OBS is where we can set up shortcut keys to be able to control OBS. So we can create our own keyboard shortcuts to do things like start or stop streaming, start or stop recording, or a heap of other functions that you've got inside of OBS as well. So this is something that's not necessary, but it can really streamline the way that you're able to control and configure everything up and run your live stream or while you're actually live. The next tab here in settings is accessibility, which is one of the newer features, which is pretty cool because it helps people who may have a disability or may have some eyesight issues to select colors throughout the interface that better suit them. So there's colors here by default with their color codes, or you can use different colors and select your own color that suits you, which is really cool for those who need it. And down here under advanced, you guessed it, there's a lot more advanced settings in here. I would say that one that I do check here quite often and make sure is selected is to automatically reconnect so this one here make sure that's enabled so if for whatever reason your internet drops out it's actually going to automatically attempt to reconnect and to restart your stream with this setting enabled so we're going to hit ok because we're happy with all our settings and now we're going to go ahead and set up our scenes for our live streams so you can see down the bottom left i've already got one default scene because there always has to be at least one that's created but we're going to rename this one just to make it nice and clear so right click and then hit rename and let's just call this one main camera. Now for this main camera, we now need to specify which sources we want to have used, which cameras we want to have used in this scene of the main camera. So we're going to go ahead and press the plus button over here on our sources. And here I'm going to choose video capture device. We've chosen video capture device and we get to rename it here if we like. I'm going to rename this to MacBook webcam. I've just got the webcam today. And now we get to specify which camera we're going to link here to this video source. So if we click here, you can see I'm pretty limited with my choices because I've only got the one camera hooked up, which is just the FaceTime HD camera, the built-in camera on my MacBook. And most modern day computers will have the same. They'll have a built-in camera. So you should at least have that. If you do have other cameras connected to your computer, then they will show up here and you'll be able to choose those. But today we're going to choose this camera. Hello, it works. Here I am. You can see the preset here is set to high. That's great, that's what we want. You can see there are other options there, but we're set at 1920 by 1080, which is high. And these are all lesser quality. So we wanna stay on high. And then once you're happy, click okay. And here we are on our main canvas screen there. And you can see in the sources, it's added MacBook webcam, which is the camera that we're seeing right now, which is all great. Now it is important to know that you aren't just limited to the one camera. I do have just the one hooked up to my laptop. But if you click here and you went video capture device, you'd actually have the option to add more. If there were more, you could add more there. The other options are that you can add all sorts of things. So today I'm gonna to give you the example of let's say a, uh, a presentation that we could add in. So I've gone image, you can go browse, and then you can select your presentation. And there we go. And if you've got multiple pages to your presentation, you can simply go image again and find the next page of your presentation and hit OK. And you can see down here, you can just simply turn those off and on. You can also change the hierarchy of them. You can move them above each other and choose which one is most important just by clicking and dragging like so. So you could create a really basic stream this way, but where it does become a little bit more complicated is if you've got lots of different layers and lots of different inputs around your sources here, a couple of different screen shares, a couple of cameras, whatever it might be. If you're trying to switch between things while you're live, it's likely you could be clicking the wrong ones and getting frustrated and overwhelmed with all the settings. That's where scenes become really powerful. So we can have one scene just for our main camera, then we might have a scene for a screen share, we might have a scene that we cut to for playing a video animation or something like that. So that's what we're gonna set up now so you can see what that looks like. So we'll get rid of these images here and we'll hit rubbish bin. Yes, let's add a new scene over here and let's call this presentation. If I could spell correctly, presentation, okay. Okay, cool, so now we have two scenes set up. Our main camera, hello, and our presentation, which has nothing in it at the moment. So let's set that up quickly. We hit plus, we go image, we find our first image of our presentation, our cover, happy days. Let's add a couple more just so it can look like a real presentation. Okay, so we've got a few there. Now it's brought it in um, sort of back to front to how I'd like it. So I'm gonna put my cover image there 
and my second image there just so it's nice and orderly so one two three and we go down that way okay so now you can see we've got our main camera here and we've got our presentation here which we can click between in our scenes nice and easily there's one other scene which I think you might find useful and that is creating a screen share. Quite often people might want to do that if they're live streaming. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit plus to add another scene. I'm going to call it, you guessed it, screen share. I'm going to go OK. And then over here in our sources, add source, display capture. I'm happy with display capture. You actually can't call it the same as your scene as you'll see. If I try, it just said name is already in you. So it's got to be something different. So even if there's a gap between there, that might work. Okay, so it's automatically hooked up to the screen which I've got running at the moment. Now, I actually have two screens going at the moment, uh, lucky. So let's go ahead and see if it works. If I turn it onto the other screen, cool, it does. So let's hit okay. I'm really happy with that. Now I can switch between all my different scenes. Now, as you can see here, my second display screen is actually really large, so it doesn't quite fit into the screen we have, but you can easily just resize like so and bring into line so it fits our screen. Perfect. And over here, I can move around easily on my screen and easily navigate like so. Another really cool tool you can use through scenes is picture in picture. Let me show you what I mean. First, you go to your screen share. You wanna duplicate that screen share video and then you can see it's duplicated it and created screen share with video over here in our source now we want to change our source to video capture device again choose your camera there i am hit ok and as you can see it's put me on top of that screen share now you can resize your camera there you can bring it down move it around to wherever you like and then you can move between your scenes like so you might want to go full screen, you might want to go back to the screen share video in the corner, or you might get sick of looking at yourself and show the audience the full screen that you are sharing. Now there's one last scene I'm going to add in here which I want to show you and that is video. It may be an intro video or just a showreel or something like that which you may want to add into your live stream. So let's just call it video. And over here in your sources, select source. And then you're going to want to select media source. Let's call it video highlight and you can just search on your local files here browse mine's located on the desktop and then you've got some settings down here you can loop the video you can restart playback when source becomes active you can use hardware decoding when available show nothing when playback ends so a few different options but i'm happy for it to restart playback when source becomes active and then show nothing when playback ends i'm happy with all of that and there's my video and how cool is that? That's playing along. And I can switch back between. And then when I click on it, it goes back to the start to show the video again. Now there are ways to customize your video and your audio even further. If you select your scene, in this instance, it's the main camera and we've got our MacBook webcam selected. We can go into properties here and you can see that there's obviously those areas there that we can customize but we can also add filters so if you click on filters here um, there's a whole range of audio and video filters this first one up here says audio and video filters it is actually mainly audio filters you can see here we've got different uh, things we can do to uh, work with our audio we've got gain expander compressors everything to sort of improve the audio quality we've also got video delay down here which if your video and audio is out of sync this will help you to sync it all back up We've got effect filters down here, which will change the video side of things. You've got uh, LUTs if you want to put on a LUT, that's like a filter. You've got chroma key. If you're filming on a green screen or a blue screen, you can chroma key out the background. And you've also got color correction. Let's see um, what color correction does. This is something that you might want to use. And you can see that you can change the contrast, saturation, you make yourself really orange if you want, if you like, into that sort of thing. Let's do that. Um, so you can really get really granular with some of those controls there. Close, happy with that. Now, one of the things I probably would use would be the picture in picture, and I'd probably adjust that. So again, we can click on our screen share with video there. So we wanna make sure we click on our video capture device, which is this one here. We go to filters, and now I might want to crop my video a little bit. Let's hit okay. And you can see that I can crop it there 
and uh, it will give us a little bit more. Let's make this box a little bit smaller so we can see what we're doing and see what it is doing. So you can see here, there's a little bit of extra dead space, what I call on the sides, which is just blocking that background there. So let's see if we can crop. So we want to crop the left. Let's say we can use the arrows to crop. And as you can see, that's going quite slow. So let's just choose a number, 300, awesome. And then we want to crop the right side too. Let's go to 60. Great, awesome. And you can see now it's made that a bit smaller and that fits into that corner nicely. So you might want to try that for your picture in pictures. We can also add text to our live streams as well. Let me show you how you do that. So we've selected our main camera here and that's where we want our text today. We hit plus, we go to text. Let's call this Tom title. Okay, and then here is where we write our text. I'm just gonna put my name in, Tom Rollins. And you've got a few different settings down here, which you can do an outline, drop shadow, whatever you like. I'm gonna just keep it pretty plain and simple. You can select your font. Let's go with impact, because I like to make a big impact and hit okay. And then you can just bring it down and resize accordingly down here. Same goes for logos. If you want to put a logo in, you go plus, you go image, primal video logo, find one of those, locate your logo. Here it is on the desktop. And there we go, that easy. You can put it on and you can relocate it to wherever you please. Just put it right there. Um, so yeah, it's really easy to add text and logos to your live streams. Um, and you can obviously turn it off and on as you please down here. Okay, we've done all the hard work. We've set our scenes up. We've got our sources, logos, webcams, screen shares. We've got it all set up. Now it's time to go live. Let me show you how you do that. You simply come down here to start streaming. You can click that and it'll come up with this pop-up box. It says you need to set up broadcast before you can start streaming. So go to manage broadcast and then go to select existing broadcast. We select this one because we've already previously connected our YouTube channel and so it's all ready to go. So click that, select broadcast and start streaming and then select that. Okay, it says we've gone live. Down here you can see the minutes clicking along. You can see our CPU usage down here and you can also see the data we're using up over in the right hand corner there. It'll also tell us if we've dropped any frames and if we've got any issues down there as well. So let's go over to our YouTube studio to see how we're going over there. And you can see I'm live. Over here, we've got our chat. So we can chat to our people out there. Hello, everyone out there. You can hit that, which is cool. That's really cool. Looks like we've got an excellent connection and that's all working really well. Let's go back to our OBS. Another thing we can do is go to our studio mode, which we spoke about earlier. So this is where, you know, the live stream experts and pros would, would normally traditionally go in their software. Over in my preview area on the left over here, we can put our presentation and get that queued up, ready to go. And then when we want that to go live, we simply go transition and that will come on like so. And let's say that we want to uh, put our video on next. Again, we hit video and it's queued up over here on our preview screen. And then when we hit transition, when we're ready to go, we can hit that and it's moved on in and the video is playing. And then at any time, of course, if you want to head back to that main camera, you can select so here, there I am, and then you can transition back onto the live screen. And you can click off studio mode just by going down to the bottom right hand side here, click on studio mode and we're back up to full screen. So there you have it guys, that is a complete walkthrough of OBS Studio. I hope I've taught you something, hope you've learned something today and you feel more confident going into your live streaming. Now, if you wanna see how OBS stacks up to the other top options out there, check out the videos linked on screen where we compared the best live streaming software for Mac and PC. And don't forget to check out all the resources we have for you linked in the description below, including a link to my channel too, if you wanna check that out. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.